Hello and welcome back YouTube. You're watching Let's Play with Audie Murphy. I am Audie Murphy and this is part three of the XCOM Let's Play. So last time we had a little bit of a snafu. I have to admit it to you guys. Um, you may have noticed the abrupt cut there at the end. And what happened there was the end of the mission got corrupted somehow. The source video file got corrupted. Thanks to uh, Windows Movie Maker, which is what I've been using to edit these videos so far. Now, in the last episode, I mentioned that we were going to be seeing some performance-related improvements. And one of those performance-related improvements is that I'm going to be upgrading to a uh, prosumer editing suite. So that's not going to be a problem uh, anymore. And I do want to thank you guys for uh, bearing with me as we sort out some of these technical difficulties and get ourselves into a better position for uh, YouTubing in general. So this mission is another Urban Night mission. Uh, this one is Operation Shattered Star, uh, which takes place in Canada. Uh, and we see here that we have two troops that are upgraded, uh, the other two are rookies. I do have one heavy here that I'm going to move out and start moving towards that meld, and a sniper, um, which is still unupgraded, still can't move and fire, uh, and then just these two rookies that are going to be my cannon fodder. Hopefully they're not going to get shot up quite as quickly as uh, you saw in the last video. Uh, I, I managed to get that one trooper pretty wasted pretty quick. Fortunately I was able to bring her back, but uh, here we're going to have contact very quickly here as I push up and encounter two sectoids right off the bat. They're going to move and take fire. They're going to move up and take cover behind the building. And with this guy, I think I'm just going to keep moving him towards the meld, intending to use him as a flank or to keep that front area of the building clear. I'm still not quite sure exactly what all is in there. There may be more aliens. I'm going to move this guy up and try to take a closer look and see if he can lay down an angle of fire on that one sectoid next turn. That one sectoid is going to move up and get into a firing position, go into overwatch, and the other sectoid is going to move up behind him. And it looks like, what do we got going on here? Do we have some mind melding action going on? No, he is going to go ahead and shoot at, shoot at and score a hit on my trooper that's behind half cover there, which is very unfortunate first turn move for me. Meanwhile, we have two additional sectoids coming out of the woodwork. So I have a very exposed right flank here, and I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with it. Uh, if I move this trooper out, she's probably going to take fire from inside the building, and she's already at very low health, but there's really not much else I can do. I do have to get into a position, and yet she is going to start taking fire from inside that building. Fortunately, the sectoid inside misses, and she is already at low health. One more hit would probably do her in at this point, but she is going to be able to get around that car, ID the sectoid on the far side, get a flanking shot, fire, and score a critical hit, taking him down. So now it is down to three sectoids on that side. My heavy, meanwhile, is way out of position. He was going for the smelt, so he might as well just go ahead, run up, grab that, and see what I can do with him for the rest of this turn. He's not going to be able to get a shot on those four sectoids. Oh, down to three sectoids now, uh, even if he charges hard into there. So he's pretty much out of the fight for the time being. Meanwhile, my sniper is up here. He is able to ID at two sectoids down at the far end of the hall. He has a 52% shot, and he is going to take it. But unfortunately, he just dings the side of the wall, causing no damage whatsoever, and just angering the sectoids further. Meanwhile, I have two rookies here that are supporting him, one of which is able to get a good flanking shot, but flanking those two remaining sectoids is going to be very, very, very difficult. I'm going to have to flank around this entire building, so what I'm going to do is just lay down one shot here, trying to get a good angle on him. Unfortunately, missing horrendously and I'm forced to pass it back to the alien menace. So there are three sectoids down at the end of the hall, all of whom are looking at me very, very angrily. This one sectoid is going to mind meld the other one, who's in a very advantageous firing position. That one is going to move up, taking no fire from my men, as I have no overwatch in effect. He is going to take aim, fire, and score a headshot on one of my rookies, taking her out of the fight for good. There's no getting up from that one. She is dead. So my hopes for bringing all my men back today are dashed, and that remaining sectoid is going to go into overwatch. Meanwhile, my sniper is panicking, so he's not even going to be able to get a shot this turn, and my only two remaining troops are my heavy here, who is way, way, way out of position, and the only thing I can really do with him is just move up, try to get at this meld, and hopefully not run into any more aliens on this side, because any more at this point would just stack the deck entirely against me. All I have remaining to work with is this one rookie, who does actually have some fairly good shots, 
wants to work with. Uh, one of them is a 60, unfortunately. That's going to be against the sectoid that does have that extra bar of health. Uh, we do have another 60 against the other one, and a 40 on the one that's doing the mine building. So I decided that's probably going to be the best shot to take. Unfortunately, while I do hit, that hard cover reduces that damage, and I only take off two slivers of health, leaving it still up, leaving all sectoids still up, and he is just going to mine meld again, putting that other sectoid in a much better position to start doing some real heavy damage. Fortunately, it decides not to take a shot on me and instead take cover on its own to operate better next turn, getting behind that wall, and all the sectoids are now going to be on Overwatch, making maneuverability very, very difficult for me. Fortunately, this one heavy has not quite been challenged yet, and he is just going to be able to pop up that melt and move right around flank up on those sectoids, hopefully not running into any more aliens on the reverse side of this building, because, oh, and there we are. We have two more sectoids at point-blank range that are just going to pop up, move behind cover, and he is not going to be able to do much with it this turn. All he can do is lay down fire on one of them, hopefully scoring a hit. He does actually manage to take one down, so that's going to be a load off his mind, but he still has that one to deal with. It's going to be in very close quarters to take a shot next turn. Meanwhile, my sniper still has his hand full. He's got two some more sectoids to deal with, uh, both of which are under a heavy cover, both of which are not going to be easy to hit, and all he can do is maybe try to range a grenade, but even that is going to be a little bit far. All he can do is just hope to take a good shot or decide to move back into cover. He is just going to go ahead and take that shot. It's a one in three chance. Might as well go for it, but unfortunately, he's not going to win today. That shot sails through clean air, hitting nothing by several meters, and all I have to work with remaining is the one rookie who's fortunately managed to evade fire so far. And at this point, all I can do is just hope that luck holds up, because my squad is down to three, and most of my firepower is over on the other side of this building. She is going to move up and try to get into a better firing position. Unfortunately, that one sectoid who is on Overwatch is going to go ahead and take some pot shots at her. Missing, fortunately for me, and she is going to be able to get into a good, favorable cover facing that other sectoid. Meanwhile, however, oh, and she does pop a shot off on that mine melding sectoid. Oh, fortunately scoring great hit and taking him out of the fight. That is going to take out one of the other sectoids as well, dropping that total by two. So now there is just that one remaining sectoid to deal with on the far side that's behind heavy cover, and that new sectoid that just popped up that is behind not so favorable cover. Unfortunately, that sectoid is going to be able to get close enough to flank uh, my heavy and really negate any kind of cover advantage that he presently has. And that's exactly what that sectoid is going to do. It's going to go ahead and move up. Oh no, it's going to scoot right past him into the shadows, probably setting up on Overwatch. But moving into that is a risk I'm willing to take because there is a flanking shot there that's too close not to employ. And deciding to go after that other sectoid was, it turns out to be a very, very bad idea as he misses that 72% shot and puts me in kind of a negative situation here unless I can score directly on hit with the sniper, but he is not going to be so lucky either. That is the third air ball that he's thrown this round, and he is not living up to his title at all. So I now just have this remaining rookie to work with, and as she moves up, she's actually going to expose two more sectoids who are going to pop out, join the fight and all I can do is pass back to them and wait for my heavy to die here. He is overexposed. He has almost no cover on that side. And that mind-melded alien it looks like he's getting ready to do some heavy damage. One of the sectoids is going to take a shot at me. Hit, fortunately, not kill me. But this remaining sectoid is going to move back, get into a firing position, lay down an angle of fire, take his shot, and impact the side of the trailer, fortunately sparing my heavy's life with two silvers remaining. Unfortunately, he is now wounded, so hitting all those remaining sectoids with his rifle is going to be less than easy for him. I'm trying to size up a rock here to see exactly how many of these sectoids I can take out. I know that there's probably more than I can see here. I'm not sure exactly where that remaining sectoid is, so I'm trying to get a large enough angle on it to where it might have some chance of killing him too. Unfortunately, I don't think that I'm going to be able to do much more damage than I'm already looking at, so I'm just going to go ahead and fire it off and hope that those two sectoids are devastated in the blast. And fortunately, they are taking two of them down, leaving one remaining visible sectoid. Unfortunately, there is still that one sectoid to deal with who is going to be able to scoot up and take a shot on my heavy next turn, probably killing him. So I'm going to try to line up a shot here with the sniper. It's a long shot, but again, again, for the fifth time in a row, 
missing, missing that sectoid spectacularly, and that sniper is not proving his worth at all this round. My rookie, however, is going to line up her shot, having flanked, hit, and end the mission in a glorious fashion. I only lost the one rookie there, and we're going to take it back on the Chinook. Thanks for watching, guys. We're going to have the next one up in the sidebar. Remember to check out the channel, like, and subscribe if you enjoyed, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Commander to the Situation Room. Every day, federal scientists are looking for new ways to kill bugs. Would you like to know more? Everyone's doing their part. Are you? The war effort needs your effort. At work, at home, in your community.